So let's look at building a decision tree using the add-ins. The decision tree that we're going to build is the one found on page 105 of your textbook. It's the uh, example that we looked at in, in class basically, where we have a single decision. Our alternatives are to build a sm small condo complex, a medium condo complex, or a large condo complex. After we build, then nature will take over and it will either have a strong demand or a weak demand. Same thing if we put the medium, strong or weak, same thing if they're large. And we're assuming here independence between our decision and what the outcome is going to be. So we need to build this in Excel using the add-in. So the first thing I need to do is actually add in the decision analysis add-in. So I'm going to go up to File. Right now I'm on Windows and this is Excel 2010. I go to Add-ins. Sorry, I go to Options. And then I go to Add-ins. And then Manage Excel Add-ins. And the one I'm looking for is Decision Analysis. You should have already put these somewhere um, when you installed it from the first video. And I'm going to go ahead and do and of our, um, yes, do random variables also, uh, just because it's, it might be needed for the decision analysis. Let's click OK. Once I do that, then when I go to the add-ins tab, I now have a menu up here called ORMM. I go down and I want to do decision analysis, new problem. And let's call this because I'm really great at this. So come up with new names. Um, random. I guess I didn't. I don't really need it. Random. If you leave it, it'll put random data in there. But we have data, so I'm not going to put that. We do have node values. Values only on terminals. I'm going to get rid of the titles and graphics. I'm going to click on Show All Links, and I'm going to get rid of Auto Place Nodes. I'm going to try to place them myself. The number of nodes and the number of arcs. So this is a little bit tricky, but I think we can do it. So the book shows four nodes and then a bunch of terminal stuff. The add-in is counting each ending point as a node, so there are terminal nodes. So we have four plus these two, six, eight, Ten. So we have a total of 10 nodes. So we have to count the terminal nodes. It automatically says there's 9 arcs, which is correct. And then we click OK. And it comes up in a new sheet right here. And notice that by default it gave us a decision node. Over here we have node types. Decision node with everything else is terminal. So let me see. Let's take this guy and let's put him here. Maybe. So the first node is our decision node. So I'm going to change the node or arc. And I'm going to change the nodes right now. I'm going to change node one. It is a decision. It doesn't have a value, but I'm going to change its name to. Um, let's see. Let's say this is. Uh, let's change it to. Condo size. Change. When I did that, it changed the name here. And. Let's change the second node. It's not a terminal, it's a chance node, so we need to see. Uh, we don't have the node name is going to be small. So again, when I changed it, it changed to small. Third node is a chance node. That's a 
medium. Fourth node is a chance node. It's large. Fifth node, I'm going to go up to the top and call this one 5, where I did a small strong. So I'm going to change that. It is a terminal node, so I'm just going to change it to SS, small strong. Six is going to be small weak. Seven is going to be medium strong. Eight is weak. Nine is large strong. And ten is large. Now I see that those are chance nodes, I got the terminal nodes. I need to now put in the proper arcs. So I need to go back into change node slash arc and do arcs. Arc one will go from node one to node two. Second arc, I'm going from node one to node three. For the third arc, I'm going from node one to node four. Uh, then I'll go up here to be five and six, so I'm sorry. Four. The fourth arc will go from node two to node the fifth one will go from node two to node six. Sixth arc goes from node three to seven. Seventh one goes from node 3 to 8 arc 8 goes from node 4 to 9 and finally the last arc goes from node 4 to node 10 and now we have what I think is going to be the proper tree. Now the only thing we need to do is change the node level and the node depth. Node level is going from left to right. starts at level 0. So I want this one to be 0. I want these two to be 1, 1, 1. And I want the end ones to be 2. Uh, the depth Let's see, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 2, one, two. so I want this one to be 2, uh, I want this one to be 1, this one to be 2, So now I click on graphics and I get a somewhat pretty decision tree. Conda size, small, medium, or large, small, strong, small, weak, da, 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 da. Right? So it looks somewhat like what we had seen before. Notice the terminal nodes here are in a different color, the chance nodes are in this blue, and orange just the decision nodes. So then what we need to do is go back to example, and if we want to solve this thing, um, 
let's click it, it'll give us an error, but let's click solve. It says, oh, node small 2 gives me the name of it. It's a chance node that some are probably those even though do not sum 1. Pressure has to neglect or press node quick. So let's press no. So that means I need to take the arcs coming out of node 2, or two of them, and add them, make sure that the probabilities add up to 1. So then I need to change the node slash arc. So things coming out of node 2 is arc 4 and 5. So arc 4, the probability that it's it's strong, uh, we build a small and it's strong. Uh, I think the book uses 0.8. Node 5 then has got to be 0.2. Node 6, it's the medium. It's going from 3, which is a chance node, to, to the strong. Again, that's going to be 0 0.8. And arc 7 is going to be 0 0.2. Arc 8 goes to large strong, so it's going to be 0 0.8. And the final arc, arc 9, large weak, 0.2. Now we see that there are probabilities over here. And, this. and now if I click on solve, it tells me right here that the decision should be arc 3, which is build a large plant. Now notice I didn't I didn't put any values over here, so I need to put values. I need to go back into the nodes and actually put values on the nodes. Uh, I only care about the terminal nodes, so 5, that was the value for the terminal node, was 8, 6, it was 7, for a medium strong it was 14 million, medium weak is 5 million, large, strong was 20 million, and large weak was 10 Now let's click solve again. Now we see that the value is 14.2 million is the expected size. Now if I do graphics it will show me the optimal decision which is kind of size, the decision is large, the expected value is $14.2 million. All right, and the red line here is now showing me that, that that is the decision I should make. These extra digits out here are just because we're rounding. So obviously I'm not going to make $14.2 million if I build a large plant. I'm either going to make $20 million or I'm going to lose $9 million. But if I had this project do over and over and over again, than in the expected sense out of the 14.2 million. So that's building a decision tree using the Excel add-ins. Um, we will have sequential decision trees that take longer, but um, it's a good idea to maybe sketch it out by hand before you try to stick it in here to get the results to check your results. Alrighty.